Woo! All right, fellas. Today we're going to get into it with something a little bit different, a little bit special, but um, it's going to make sense. Stay tuned. Normally on this channel, I'm talking about men's sexual health, how to get your erections better, things like that. But today we have to talk about the relationships because it's not just about the erections. It's about those connections because having erections on demand with no demand. <laughs> Hey, this is Brian, a.k.a. Uncle B, and for the last 24 years, I've been the men's performance coach with Goodwood. And as a coach, I can say that a good 80% of men's sexual health issues deals with, you know, where you have a physical member. That means it has to move. But that other 20% includes relationships, and you have to understand that in order for you to make that connection. Specifically, we're going to talk about why men and women are not getting along in mass. And... We're going to go there. We're going to talk about the real differences between a man and a husband and a woman and a wife. Makes a big difference. So please leave comments down in the comment section below. Hit the like, subscribe, and notification bell. And you know, if you want to hear some more topics like this covering relationships, let me know in the comment section. But what I'm going to do, because we're talking about relationships, still ends up with the same thing. Break this down till it cannot be broken anymore. So really quick, we're gonna go through the meaning of life. I can go through the meaning of life quick. No, we're just gonna do it here. When you're born, you have no control. By the time you are two, you've gained so much control and have so little control, you're out of control. By the time you're 10, ah, you finally have a level of control that you can be at home by yourself. By the time you hit your teenage years, you got so much control and have so little control, you're back out of control. By the time you're in your 20s, ah, you finally have control. By the time you're in your 30s, it's like, Wow, this is a lot of control here. By the time you're in your 40s, it's like, ooh, I am so tired of having all this control. By the time you're in your 50s, you're like, ooh, am I losing control? And in the 60s, 70s, 80s, it's all about trying to keep as much control as possible. Now, why is this important? Because the meaning of life is control, because in order for humans to continue to exist, well, we have to control the environment, we have to control the people around us so that we can have babies and the babies can, you know, grow up, learn how to control themselves, and then, voila, circle of life, you're able to now have generations of people because, I mean, that's just literally how it works. In order for you to be born and, and live, someone had to control the environment around you till you could take over. That's how we got here. And one last thing to understand about control is that men are designed to control the environment. Like it's easier for a man to build a house than a woman. And women are designed to control people. And that's an extra special superpower right there because she can get a man to build a house for her. You see see how he's doing work and she just said, mm-hmm, yeah. So let's really get into it. Ooh, this is about to get spicy. I'm invoking the 80-20 rule. That means that whatever I'm talking about, in general, 80% of it's like in general. That's the general. 20% is the outliers. We ain't, we ain't, they over there. We ain't talking about dads. We talking about people in general. The first thing I have to say is that men and women are not equal. Surprise! I'm not sure why that's a surprise, but hey, I never got that because, you know, I was told when I was 18, I had to sign up for the United States Selective Service, which means code word for draft. And basically, I had to sign up, but none of the women had to sign up because there's a difference between men and women. The biggest difference, the reason why men have to sign up for the draft and they're not trying to draft women is because there's a huge difference in testosterone levels. We're talking about for men, we have 300 to 800 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone going through our body on average every day. For women, they have 20 to 70 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. That is a huge gap. I mean, I'm running around with 700. If I'm running to a woman who has 70, well, the equivalent is me running to a guy who has 7,000 nanograms per deciliter of testosterone. It's way too much. You're not going to overpower that. And that fuels the way that men and women just react with life because women nurture and communicate. You know how men provide and protect? Women nurture and communicate. Let's break that down. First of all, women are born with all the nurturing equipment. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, they can give birth and can feed the baby. That's nurturing 101, straight out the book. The other thing on the communication side, women talk seven, 
seven times more words per day than men do. Ooh, that's a lot of talking. The other thing about communications is just how it comes across. If a woman yells, people will start running towards her. Like, what's going on? Let's go save her. If a man is yelling, ah, people are like, hold up. You go check. I'm not going to check. You go check. I don't know what's going on with him, man. There's something beating him up. I ain't trying to find out what's going on. Huge difference. And the whole thing about men being able to provide and protect that comes off of that testosterone. That testosterone allows your body to just naturally develop way stronger. And providing, well, that's a learned process. You have to learn how to provide. You know, if you were born in the 1600s, you got to provide. 1800s, you got to provide. 2023, you got to provide. And so a lot of people are like, well, men and women are, you know, are you saying something about their intelligence? Oh, men and women are equally intelligent. There's already research on that. But our intelligence is informed by our body. A giant man and a dwarf, and you're allowed to say dwarf, they call themselves dwarfs. <laughs> a giant man and a dwarf are can be equally intelligent. However, one of them knows instinctively, like, yeah, I need to duck my head when I walk through a door frame. Because his body is telling him, yeah, you keep hitting your head. Stop it. That's, that's, that doesn't make any sense. And a dwarf is more than likely not dreaming of an NBA career. I mean, you can dream, but me. Mm. And that huge difference in that testosterone level is for real. If a man tries to, I don't know, become a woman by reducing his testosterone to 70, he's basically going to kill himself. Because you have more testosterone receptors in your heart than anywhere in your body. So uh, if you have less testosterone to build the muscles of your heart, um, yeah, you're going to have some issues. Because the interesting thing is that a 10-year-old boy has 70 nanograms per deciliter, the same as an adult woman. We're different and society recognizes that difference. If you look at a man on the side of the road compared to a woman on the side of the road, well, if a man's on the side of the road, People just drive by like, oh, he got it. If a woman's on the side of the road, they'll pull over, look like you need some help. Yes, society recognizes that too. So let's really get into it now. When we talk about a man and a woman, you know, becoming a husband and a wife, we have to break that down because there's levels to this. For the female side, it goes female, woman, lady, wife, mother, grandmother, etc. For the male side, it goes male, man, gentleman, husband, father, grandfather, etc. A husband and wife think very differently than a man and a woman. And we break that apart because a lot of people think you get married to become a husband or wife. That's not true. You're a husband or a wife before you get married. You know, that doesn't apply to any other situation. You can't go into a hospital and say, you know what? I want a job as a brain surgeon. Uh, have you ever done anything with brain surgery? No, but can I get the job? You see how that doesn't make sense? So you can't just say, hey, I'm a man and I want to be a husband without any level of training at all. Same thing as applies to women. You can't just skip being a lady and being a wife just by saying, hey, one day I'm gonna go from being a woman to being a wife. That's a title change, but if you're not a wife already, it's not gonna work out. Now here's the issue that we're facing today because most women were trained to be women. They weren't trained to be wives. When I say that, that difference is that women have been hearing for my entire life that, hey, hey, you don't need to get married. You don't want to be a wife because that's like slavery or oppressive or something like that. For men, we haven't got that message until recently where it's like, yo, this is sort of crazy where uh, being a husband can be detrimental to your financial health. The real truth of it is a man and a woman are not held responsible. It's just a descriptor. It's not describing a job. You can't walk into some place and say, hey, I want a job doing whatever. And it's like, well, what's your qualifications? I'm a man or I'm a woman. It doesn't describe anything. You need to have something in front of your name like plumber, electrician, doctor, ditch digger. There has to be a descriptor. A husband and a wife are accountable to each other for financial health, their own health, spiritual health, finances, the future, children. It's one unit together. Man and woman getting married, it's usually just a partnership. It's like you got your part, they got their part, they get together, and now you got your parts all the way until something doesn't work and then you just take your parts apart. That's why partnerships and marriage are not the same thing. 
So to be a husband or a wife, you actually have to be raised that way or you want to be as in want to be like you actually study it. You find people and you say, hey, I have some questions. Hop on YouTube and well, don't hop on to talk to real people. <laughs> Not only do you have to want to be, you have to get your own training in. And we're talking about those basics. At the basic level, being able to provide and protect, nurture and communicate. That's the basic level. There's levels to getting above that. Now, here's the reality for fellas out there right now. If you're looking for a wife, the competitive landscape is hard because a lot of guys are looking for wives. Why? Because for most guys, we're thinking into the future. As a leader, you're supposed to think it to the future. And as you get older, just like gray hair and ED can be inevitable, so is injuries, pain, joints, all types of stuff not working. If you have somebody living in-house with you that you don't have to pay to take care of you, who are you going to have a soft landing at the end of your life? If you're trying to pay someone at the end of your life to come by and visit you, they're not visiting on Thanksgiving or Christmas or the holidays or Valentine's Day. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you want to figure out how to become a husband and get yourself a wife. It's just a safer route. Here's an interesting thing about most arguments when it comes to men and women and relationships. We often combine man and husband into the same scenario. And those are two completely different things. The same thing for a woman and a wife. They're two completely separate thought processes and they were the way they want to live their life. If you want to just date, then you can function as a man and just meet women and have at it. Okay. But if you're trying to get married, Different equation altogether. And just a word of caution from the great Kevin Samuels who pointed out, if you try to live to the rest for the rest of your life comfortably, uh, you better be retiring with $3 million. Or you can retire with a person that can help you out so you don't have to pay a person to come and take care of you. Uh, yes, somebody, some stranger is going to have to wipe your ass. You. But the real message is, guys, if you want to have a nice life, you want to get a good wife, make sure she's actually a wife and not just a woman. And if you want to get married and stay married, make sure a husband and not just a man. Hey, that's all I got for now, fellas. I hope you learned something out of this. Leave down in the comment section if, you know, if this touched you in a certain way. I know some guys are like, ooh, I got something to say. Go ahead and say it. And if you want me to go into uh, some more relationship stuff, oh man, I can get deep into this. I mean, deep into this. Let me know in the comment section below. And hey, this is Uncle B saying, get your game up and go hard. Peace out.